Tesla is absolutely right on the button. You know, Tesla is one that, of course, at that time, probably started inventing these strange terms. You know, inventing some term like radiant energy. Okay, what is that, guys? Well, see, Tesla discovers this because the people that were running the DC generators at the powerhouses threw the switch, the wire glowed, killing the operator, and as soon as the current caught up, the glow went away. That's the energy that we want to capture. That's the radiant energy when the wire glows and then collapses back. Those generators were probably at 20,000 volts. So when they threw the knife switch, now just think of this for a second, there's this big inductance, there's this wire that goes down to the end. You throw the switch at the powerhouse, the voltage is already there. That's the dipole. Well, before the current can get down the wire, this wire is emitting great big gigantic lightning bolts that killed the operators. So they had to damp this out some way. So what I've just told you about the radiant energy is exactly what our engineers do. They kill the dipole. They short out the radiant and just use the current. And of course they measure the power then in watts. I'm the opposite. I say, let's find out where the source came from, how it got there. Let's learn what nature's process is right here because nature will give you all the watts you want if you transform it. So back to Tesla. Tesla, Tesla was probably a guy that was like 200 light years ahead of his time. I mean, look, the guy invents, look, he was the only guy that would sit in 100 foot lightning bolts. I mean, what was he doing there? He was studying the gas the etheric gas because he said it was a gas. Yes, he knew. He knew because he was a great studier of the experiment. You see, do we really do the experiments today? No. We just build what they tell us to build. We don't do any more experiments. You know, we don't learn from our experiments. We don't learn from the observation. You know, it's already in the book. It's been done. Don't waste your time. Here it is. These are the formulas. Learn them and you'll pass. We see these pictures of Tesla sitting in a field of electricity. Yeah, but that's etheric energy. That's exactly what nature would provide. Not the lightning bolt that would kill him? No, it, it, the lightning bolt will definitely kill him. Okay, that's not the point. The point is, how did that big of a lightning bolt get from that small of an input? Unless he was tapping something. And that's what he was studying. The flow of etheric energy. When, when Tesla saw, you know, this gaseous cloud come out over his coil that would penetrate everything and sting you at a distance, you know, that's etheric energy. That's the energy that makes up the electricity. What I studied of Tesla was everything that he possibly has done that I could get a paper on. I read his lectures. I understand what he was talking about by the way he wound his coils. I understand, you know, why he said you could build coils that had little capacitance or a lot of capacitance. But the, the main thing that I studied the most was 
what is the distribution of capacitance in these wires? Because that's what led me to build these machines is because just by reading what Tesla's talking about there, one knows that any electrical circuit, no matter how powerful it is, that the radiant will appear first when the switch goes on. So you have to be able to steal that. Yeah, see, Tesla gave up the idea of alternating current and went to pulse DC. That's where the power is. PWM. Pulse width modulation. You know, anything that you pulse, you can get an extreme amount of energy out of for a microsecond in time. Yeah, so, so it becomes efficient, right? It's not always on and it's not off. You know, so the battery can't react fast enough with the current to be used up if you do this method. And you can capture it and send it to the next battery. You know, this is what Tesla was about in the end. I don't know what, it, what the batteries were that Tesla had or if he even used batteries. I think he was more towards the end of shaking it out of the vacuum and lighting light bulbs, which he did successfully. Okay, and running specialized motors that he developed. All right, because he already had admitted in one of his lectures that putting iron in a motor was not a benefit at all. You know, it was something that just made the motor heat up and lose energy. Because he had, he had stated that. Early version of motors, it's still used today. It consumes energy, heats up. You know, anything that causes heat sooner or later breaks down. Totally wasteful. If you want a measurement, heat is fine. Yeah. You can measure the work by the heat, you see. But it's the stuff before the heat that you're really interested in. As I said to you in the beginning, these are archaic tools to work with compared to the technology that you're dealing with, okay? When you're dealing with an energy that's uh, emitted from the vacuum, you're dealing with something like a gas flow totally different set of circumstances. Now Tesla did say that he had math for it, but it never appeared. 